Hello everyone, this is Helen H. and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. I hope everyone is doing well today. I have had so much fun with these painting papers. Um, continuing on, this is part two of my making pa painting papers, um, and this is all about mark making. Now, if you saw the first video, and I will link it at the end of this one in case you didn't, if you saw the first video, you know that what I did was just basically scrape paint on, paint uh, paint, paint on, uh, maybe two colors, uh, used a stencil or two, and that was it. Um, I just got some color down and a little bit of, of design, but now I'm talking about mark making on top of that or continuing on, and this is all without a jelly print. Plate. You do not need a jelly plate to make beautiful paper. So I'm just going to show you some that I made last night. And guys, I stayed up late last night because I was having so much fun. And the time just went like that. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, um, I've got different sizes, different weights of paper, different types of paper. So there's this one here. And this one, this one, just because of these little black dots, even though the color's wrong, it reminds me of watermelon. I, this right here, I don't know why. The seeds, I guess. This one right here. Now this one, I may take a little bit further. I'm thinking of coloring in some of these stripes in the white. I'm not sure yet. This one is finished. And then there's this one. And I don't know if you can see with this one, but right in the middle of the white dot in the at the bottom of the black is gold that that these are gold dots it's really pretty i love how this one came out then there's this one here and there's this one here and then for the bigger ones this one here obviously i used a stencil um, and some uh, two different stencils the, that one and then some dots but i went back in and I outlined some of the inside here with black, and then I put um, black around some of these circles, not all of them, and then put some white dots in. But I think just adding the black and white for contrast like that really makes a difference. And then there's this very colorful one here. This has got all colors going on, but it does have white um, splashes on it, and then I... Um, also outlined some of these turquoisey stars with black and then some of these red brick things in black. Not all of them, just some, some of them. And then this one, I love this one too. I love the colors in this one. Um, I used my Stabilo All pencil to just outline half of some of these circles here and then water activated with water and it made it look all shadowy like that. And then I put gold dots in there and then with the black dots they also have gold marker in the middle. So that's really pretty. And then this one was just basically the way it was. Um, I had put the colors on. Then I put the stencil on, so my mark making was actually these white slashes, which I just did with a, a card, an old uh, credit card type thing. And then this one here is another one that was done with just colors and then stencils on the top. This one I have not done an, any additional mark making to, and I'm actually not sure if I'm going to because I just really like it the way it is, which is fine, right? If you like the paper the way it is, you don't have to take it further. Just like when we're jelly plating or anything, if you get the response or, you know, the, the look you want, why go further? You don't need to go further, right? So I've got a couple more. Well, actually, I've got quite a few more. We're not going to do all of these, but I thought I'd do some of them. And guys, literally, I have my pencil. I've got a ballpoint pen that I used. I've got some paint brushes, my Stabilo, some paint markers um, from Dollar Tree, Old inks, I dried these out this morning, these old uh, Brea Reese inks that I know I must have gotten at um, Tuesday morning that I haven't used in forever. And then I've got some Bombay ink that I wanted to play with today. A lot of this stuff was not stuff I played with last night, so it's, you know, it's going to be like a learning curve here. So I'm going to start with this little piece here, and this little piece is just like the other little pieces. This is plain newsprint paper, you know, that you use for like wrapping. Well, I found this um, Amsterdam acrylic ink. This is a neon, neon green, but there is a little bit of neon in this already, and I thought 
I might just play with this. I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, whether I'm just going to splotch some on. That would be fun. Um, I'm not sure. So we're just going to see what happens. If, can I see? I, if I splotch it on, it just really makes a circle like that. So that's ver not very interesting. So I'm thinking, should we maybe just go around? If we can, just take it around. Well, that's not working very well either. Um, just kind of get it to make a circle. This is not, okay, you know what I might have to do is I might have to get my paintbrush and go around like this just to make some interesting circles on top of the, the circle pattern that's already there. So I'm just gonna put some of this on just adding another layer without stenciling, uh, just, you know, just really plain. And that's what I was doing last night. And I was just having so much fun. My husband was so thrilled. He was like, oh, you look like you're having fun. I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe what time it was. I think I started at about 7.30 and he came upstairs and it was already 10. And it seemed to me like I had been playing for just a few minutes, right? And it was already 10. So I'm just going to do some of this, some swirling like this. And I'm just going to go ahead. Now, I tend to work like in patterns like this. I tend to work in threes. You know, the thing about threes and moving your eyes around the paper. So I'm just going to put that down. I do have a sheet of white paper on the floor here where I'm putting these. I'm not putting them on my white carpet. Um, so then I've got this one here. Now, this is a pink, pink and red one that it looks like I did put some gesso on it also, but it's very monochromatic like that. So I thought what I'd do, I was watching um, NOIT, NOIT art last night, and she has a series on making painty papers. She used a, a fork as a mark maker and I thought, well, that's a really cool idea. So I think I might give that a try too. So I've got some black paint here. Because if you if you remember my other papers, my finished papers, m most of them have black and white on them. And that is the way you really um, can finish papers off, especially if you get stuck or whatever. They add a lot of contrast to any colors. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out a little bit of black here. And I'm going to see if this is going to work. <laughs> um, I'm going to see how well this works. Well, it doesn't seem to work that well. Okay, yeah, I guess it does if you get the whole tine done like that. So I'm just going to make some marks, you know. I mean, a plastic fork. Every, You know, if you get fast food, just save your fork or don't use your fork. And you say you got to have that for your art, right? <laughs> You gotta make those sacrifices. Eat with your fingers and keep your fork. So that's pretty cool, just to use a fork like that. And like I, the the marks don't have to be perfect. That's fine. You know, it's just fun. This is play, right? This is total play. And that's why I was having so much fun last night. Oh, my hands were caked with <laughs> with paint, and it was awesome. I was having such a good time. So I'm going to leave that one like that for right now, okay, just with those. I don't want to go in with another color yet. I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll see about maybe adding another color. Let me just see if there's another paper in here that real quickly I can use that black paint on, or that I want to use that black paint on. Um, that one's going to be hard to sell, but you know, you know, all your papers aren't going to be great, and that's fine too. Um, okay, I'm going to use this, do this one, but I'm not going to use my expensive fork tool here. Okay, I'm going to move that aside. So this one last night, I went ahead and, you know, it was just the dark pink and orange with these turquoise uh, starburst thingies on it. I went ahead and put some white marks on it. So I think what I want to do today, let me get my... A little rag here to dry my brush. So I have some of this black paint left over. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead in the these white. I didn't have any 
things set in my mind what to do in these white squares. I just put them on. So I think what I'm going to do is put a little black in the white, little black marks. And see, you can go either way. They don't all have to be the same dimension unless, I mean direction, unless you want them to be. Um, but the white and black, adding white and black just super makes everything pop. So that's what I love about it. And see, my marks are not at all um, uniform. That might bug some people, but it doesn't bug me. This, these are painty papers. Now, some of these papers, these bigger papers, could be folded. What's on the other side? Okay, this is just a piece of copy paper. This could be folded and put into a journal as a page, you know, as a background page or something like that. Some of these papers are on the big plans that I got from the Walmart when they built the Walmart in my area, one of the Walmarts, and that one has got writing on the back, so I'm not sure if I would use that one particularly as a page in a journal, but what I could use it for is to tear it up and use it in collage, which is most likely what I'm going to do with the smaller uh pieces that I showed you, the ones that are on the um, newsprint, they're probably going to be just torn up and used in pieces in collage. Or you can use them in other crafts, you know, like on tags or, you know, whatever you have, whatever you're making, tear them up. So I think adding the black and white like this looks good. Now that doesn't have to be the end of it, you know, I certainly can do more but I'm just kind of working in layers. And if you work with multiple papers at one time and just put something on your floor, like one of those old vinyl, you can get the vinyl tablecloths at Dollar Tree for $1.25 and just lay one on your floor so you can throw all your papers on it. But see the difference that it made just adding the black and white? I think that's really cool. You know, and like I said, I might go in and add more, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll add, I know what I could do. Let me see here. Um, put that there. You get a little more black paint and we'll use absolutely one of my favorite tools to use, which is the credit card. This was a, just a card for belonging to um, an organization and just offset your marks a little bit. Well, I mean, if you want them all in a row, you could certainly put them all in a row. I like to offset mine and, um, you know, like up and down so they're not all the same length. Length. And you can go different directions if you want. So that's adding a little bit more. Why is this, you know why this card, if you use a card that's not already crudded up with paint and not even, you will get better results than I am because that's what's happening. I think this card has so much paint on it from overuse as a marking tool. See, so even just adding the extra black marks like that, and how good that looks. So I'm going to let that one dry. And let me um, just push those in because I know that's wet. And if I get one that I want to use the back, I don't want that wet. Okay. All right. So let's get another one here. So this is a big one here. So basically what you got kind of got to do is look at the colors there and figure what else do I want to add to it. Um, this one actually... I'm going to go out on a limb. Am I going to go out on a limb? Should I go out on a limb? I'm feeling like I need to go out on a limb here. I'm going to go rogue here. And I'm going to get my neon orange. Now these neon these neon paints, there was, I think, like, oh my God, at 12 of them, I think. 8 or 12, I can't remember, came in these tubes. And they were very inexpensive. I got them at Walmart's. They're just um, Lancaster, is that Lancaster, no, Lang, oh my gosh, I'm not reading my glasses right, Lang Nickel Essentials, and um, I got these at Walmart, and they were very inexpensive. 
If you haven't worked with neon colors before, they are fabulous. They add such a wonderful pop of color to things. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going for it, and I'm using my very expensive toilet paper tube. I think that was in the paint, so I'm just going to get that, get that out of there. I'm just adding another color here. And I think that the orange, you know, because my paints underneath are dry, that's the key. You can layer up all the color you want as long as the colors underneath are dry because if you do not, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to get um, mud. And so if the papers are dry, these I did actually a couple weeks ago, so obviously the underneath paper was dry. And so um, let me see if I... Let's see if I can spread this around a little bit so it's a little easier to get my tube in there. Let's see if that works better. Again, you know, and here's another thing. My, um, yeah, that works a little better. My wonderful palettes here are also not even because they're so caked up with paint. You can even go off the edges, obviously. That's always fun. Well, that one didn't quite go off the edge. Let's see if we go over here. That one kind of did. Go over here. So there's just adding another color. How fun that is. And actually, this one, I might not add black and white to. Um, I might just leave it like this because not everything has to have black and white. I do like to use the black and white when I'm stuck for color, um, you know, and I've got, got myself into a corner and I don't know how to rescue it. Black and white will, I would say, almost always rescue it. And so, like I said, not all your papers are going to be fantastic. Some of these ones, like this one right here, is fairly ugly. I mean, I don't particularly care for it. Um, I don't know how I would even salvage this one. I'm not even sure if black and white would save this one. Um, and I'm looking at my inks and whatever, and I just, I'm stuck on this one. So I'll probably say this one is done for now, and I'll just tear this one up. Or, you know, this one is on white paper. I could use this as a page in a art journal and just let that be a background background for something else. So I'm going to pull that one out of the way. Um, this one right here that I did, um, here's another one. I'm not sure with the colors. Now what I did with this one, I did use my card to make these turquoise slashes and the purple ones. I, I went this way and then this way on the purple marks here. And I did this because this paper had some purple marks right here and it had some turquoisey stuff in the background. So I picked those colors back up again. And then it also had some yellow and orange. So these yellow and orange marks here, I used my oil pastels and just put them on and smudged them around with my finger. But I'm not loving this one. Um, and I'm not sure where to go with this one either, how to rescue this one. See, now this one is on that Walmart paper, so I think I would probably just use this to tear up and put into collage. So if that's the case, then I'm thinking I will probably make it busier. Um, if I'm going to use it in collage, because I might just want to cut shapes from it or something, and it's kind of not busy enough for that. So let me think, what can I do to this one here? I've cut these, all these inks. That's pink. I don't think pink would really go. Um, and I don't even know what to do with these inks. I <laughs> I bought these liquid watercolor. I bought these, you know, when we were all buying them at uh, Tuesday morning, and I've never used them. Oh, okay, so they come out like that. So let me see here. What do they do? Okay, so they are paintable. You can paint with them. Hmm, very interesting. All right, so you can paint with them. So I'm going to just go rogue. I'm just going to try some stuff. We're just going to play. We're just playing. All right, I'm going to put my ink here. That's probably way, way too much. 
but we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to use this brush that has a fairly wide head. And I wonder if I just paint... Okay, it's a totally different purple, but that's okay. I'm just going to paint some lines, some thick lines. And see, okay, so this is watercolor. Remember I told you used, I used my oil pastels. See how the oil pastels are resisting the watercolor? That's pretty cool. You know, and it, 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 it is what it is. When this is torn up, you know, it's not going to look like this. If, you, if any of you have done reverse collage, <clears throat> what I know is reverse collage, when you, you um, make a collage and with nothing, no purpose for it in mind, you know, you just make a collage or like a master board and then you turn it over like upside down and then you cut it out and um, and then you see what the results are. You know, you could get some great results with this, I'm sure, with these kind of things here. So I'm kind of trying to avoid the... So this right here, this yellow here, is acrylic paint. That's not the oil pastel, because it's the oil pastel that's resisting the, the ink. So this wasn't a great piece to start with, one of the better pieces to start with, but I'm not I'm not giving up on it because, like I said, if I, if this gets torn apart, I can use it. Who knows? You know, after this video, I might keep working on it and just bring it to the point where it's great. I mean, it's a piece of paper, right? And some some paints or acrylics, crayons. Uh, I have used so many different things on this. I've used watercolor crayons. Um, just all kinds of things so you know just play just play and have fun and then don't worry about the results just know that you can you know always tear them up so i actually even like that better with those big bold marks so i'm going to let that dry and let's see here how much time do i have here I'm at 22, so I know I'm going to go over, so let's just go over. Now, this one here, this one is really awful. I don't know if there's any salvaging this one at all. It just, this is a piece of that Walmart paper, and it's really, really bad. Uh, so, I'm just going to do something. I'm going to tear it, and I'm just tearing it here to show you that, let me see, do I have, uh, do I have anything white? No, but I can show you on this. Just to show you, if you just had a piece, you know, and put that on a background or something, a piece looks a lot better than a whole, the whole thing when you get something that you're stuck on. And of course, when you put the piece down, then you can go ahead and, and do more to it, you know, if you want to. So tearing things up like this and having little scraps of painty paper just to put on a tag or whatever, perfectly acceptable. It's your work. You can do what you want, right? So let's see here. What, what is on my desk here that I can um, play with some more? I've got my tube. I've got these inks. I really don't know how to use these inks. So let's take this piece here. This is like blues and greens, and it was on a piece of paper that apparently I had done some stamping on. I, I It was a scrap paper, and it had some stamps on. I didn't put those stamps on since I... Let me just use this paint up here, or the, this ink. Just put it on my background paper here. Um, so that stamping was on there. I did not put that on there. So... Um, I don't know, but what I do have is I've got this Bombay black ink, if it's still, oh, it sounds like it's still liquid. What I would like to do, maybe, um, okay, I think, what am I gonna do? I know what I'm gonna try to do. Let me see what I got here. I've got this paintbrush here with this it's a very small paintbrush, but it's got a very small end here. 
or even better than that, hold on a second, I have a toothpick. I wonder if I dip my toothpick. See, I'm just playing, and this is just what I've been doing, guys. Getting out this stuff, I'm, you know I'm trying to use stuff up. So what if I just scribble or try to draw with a toothpick with black ink, right? What does it do? It looks really cool is what it does. Oh, I like this, okay. And see if you get a blob like that, no problem. Just work with it, right? So just kind of free, free, free flowing. <laughs> That's hard to say. Free flowing play here. I like it. I like it. I, and I do have an idea. I'm going to do this with the toothpick here. Keep going. I'm trying to get some off the side of the toothpick because not a whole lot actually sticks to the end of a toothpick because it's too small, right? So I'm kind of going on this side and edge to get these circles, all these random circles. But I do have an idea. All right, so let me go ahead and put that aside. I'm going to keep that. Now let's take this paintbrush, which is a little bigger, and make some circles with that and see if that makes any difference. It really doesn't. It's almost doing the same thing. Well, maybe it's a little fatter, but this is so, okay, this is very therapeutic. Y'all need to get your ink out, get some painting papers. Ugh, oh, this is so fun. And I actually like the results. I think the result is quite cool. You might be thinking, what a disaster, but no, it's actually quite cool looking. Oh, I love this. See, now, this is, this is how you can get going and doing this, and then, you know, two and a half hours later, you realize you've been doing this for two and a half hours instead of the five minutes it feels like you've been doing it. Okay, that is super cool. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So now what I'm going to do is, um, let me just wipe off the end of my brush there so I don't pick it up. And That is India ink, and India ink will stain your hands. Okay, so now that I've got that on, now I think I want to go further with the black, but I think I'm going to um, use some black acrylic paint, which I have right here. And I'm going to put that on my palette. And I'm going to take, this is just some kind of dowel. I use this when I do um, uh, splattering. So I'm going to be careful because India ink is not dry, so you kind of got to be careful about that. And I'm just going to start putting some dots on it, black dots, in random areas. See how cool this is? Guys, just make some painty papers. Just put two or scrape two or three colors and white on paper. This this actually this white is what I did was I brayered it on with um, a brayer very lightly I did or I tried to use one of my palette maybe this palette and because it's yeah it might have been this one since it's so caked up with paint it didn't the brayer didn't evenly get covered and so it was a very light covering of white paint but even if you had darker it would be fine right it would still be fine okay I'm loving this and not only that, it's just super fun. Now, I, when this dries, I might actually go and put white dots in the center of the black dots using my, I have a Posca paint pen, but I found my um, Uniball Jelly Roll white uh, pen. That works super well, but I do have a Posca, a white Posca paint pen. You know, I might use that. I did use that in some of the papers I already showed you. Look at this. How cute is this? Now, I had no idea before I started this what was going to happen, what I was going to do. 
with these papers and just having a bunch of tools, tools, what, a dowel, a toilet paper roll, a credit card, markers, you know, and some paint, inks, sprays, whatever. Um, I did have some sprays out here, and um, you know how the sprays always clog and you can't use them? I mean, they, they clog and then they spray, they're all over the place. Look how cool that is. Isn't that awesome? Just by making black marks. Now this one is really cool though because it did have the white like brayered lightly over the blue and green. But like I said, when this dries, I will take probably take my white marker and some of the black, probably not all of them, some of those black dots I'll cover with white um, and maybe the others with silver. I don't know. But we're going to put that one to dry. And let me... Ugh, sorry. Let me get this last little one out. We're going to play with this one again, and I loved using the ink um, with this. So we might, but I'm kind of thinking, no, we're going to, we're not. We've already done that. We're going to do something else. We are going to get some white paint. Well, let's go ahead and use this gesso. This is the Master's Touch gesso. Who is this? Is this, jo this is either Joanne or Hobby Lobby. Um, if you want gesso, gesso to cover things, don't buy this. This is, to me, this is no more than acrylic paint. It is not thick. It is not like the, the good Liquitex gesso or golden gesso. This is not that. So this is, to me, this is just almost just like paint, like white paint. So, you know, if that's what you want, fine, but don't expect great things from it. That's all I can say. So I'm just going to cover the back of my fork, and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of go next to where I did the black lines and kind of echo those black lines in the white, and that's pretty cool. Not, not concerned if they're not perfect or if they're not as long or if they're longer. It doesn't matter. I'm just playing. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Get out some painting papers. This is, I know what I'm going to be doing for the next, like, long term. I'm going to be making tons of painting papers. But another thing I really want to do is I want to make some more journals, some different journals. Look how cute that is, right, just by doing that. Now I'm almost thinking I need another color. So um, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And let me think here. I want something that's going to be completely different. So let's see if I can find, let's see what happens if I add this. This is Painter's Palette by Plaid, light turquoise. Let's add some light turquoise, shall we? But not crumbs. That shows you when the last time I used my white turquoise was. Let me clean off my brush, or my Work. and let's let's see here let's get a different palette here oh, I know you guys I know I've got to get some more palettes okay let's try use some turquoise why see how it's not even really working well because my palette's so gross okay let's go ahead and see what happens if we add oh look at that oh my gosh that is awesome. I love it. Oh, I love it. See now, okay, so now <laughs> you're gonna watch me for the rest of the afternoon put different colors on this because now I'm almost thinking orange would be cool on here too. <laughs> but I won't do that to you, right? Or should I? I don't know. Well, you can always turn this off. Nobody's, nobody's saying you have to sit here and watch me use a fork. <laughs> In paint but I just thought it was such a brilliant idea I wanted to share it with you and again that's um what was her channel n-o-i-t art she's she's a delightful lady she's got a lovely voice and um she's got tons of videos on how to make painty papers so I'm just going to kind of beef up these turquoise lines where I didn't do such a good job here mm. A little bit more. I'm trying to line my fork up so the lines are a little bit. 
Oh, that is so cool. Okay, you know what? I'm I'm not going to add the um, orange yet because this is wet and I don't want to make a mess. You know, I really don't want to uh, start mixing colors and, and getting a bad end result. Okay. All right, so look. Isn't that cool? So that's that one. And then let me get these other ones up so we can recap what we did. Okay, we have this one here. That that made a huge difference to me, just adding those black and whites to that one, or the, the black to the white. This one we just added the neon in the circles from the paper tube. This one I added those um, ink uh, big ink squares and this one like I said I might do more on this one I can see right here though the ink is not actually dry ink sometimes does take longer to dry and then this one here I just added the neon green uh, to it but I think these are super cute I mean these can even be cute little papers folded up to put in pockets in journals and then the last one I did with you guys was this one here, which I absolutely love, and I can't wait to get white dots in that one. I have to be careful where I'm putting these up there, up so that I don't um, get one in front of the other there. All right, guys, and then these, of course, were the ones that I had already done last night. So I hope that this inspires you to make some painting papers. You don't need a gel plate to make some great fun papers to use in your journals to tear up. A lot of these are going to be torn up to be used in collage, especially these smaller pieces here um, that I, and they are light paper because it's just this white packing paper. But it's, so if you get the white packing paper with anything, um, you can use that and it's nice and thin for collage. It won't add a lot of bulk. And then also you can use the, um, brown packing paper that we also get um, from Amazon and you know those kind of places and stuff. So guys I hope um, I didn't even show you using my markers but you know a lot of the ones I made last night I just went and made the dots with various markers. Um, I'll just show you real quick. Um, just a sharpie. A, a sharpie like this works terrific and you can get though I know you can get those at the Dollar Tree Sharpie also makes a fine liner which looks like this and I love this one and these are permanent they're not going to run and then I've got my micron pens um, I did actually use I think this one here this micron on one of them the one the thing that I like about the microns and the sharpies is they draw over acrylic paint really easily then I've got the Posca white paint pen um, and then um, just the sharpie metallic pens the ones that I always use but the Dollar Tree metallic uh, paint pens and I'm not sure they even still sell these um, I've got a silver and gold one these jot Paint pens, these are fabulous. They work super well, and they're highly metallic. I mean, I know you can't see that, but they're very nice and shiny. They're not just that dull kind of goldish color. They are very metallic. So, you know, these are only a buck twenty-five too. So anyway, guys, that was it. I hope you got inspired to get some painty paints out. Use up these old paints that you're trying to get rid of. You know, we're all trying to downsize our craft rooms a little bit or you know get rid of some supplies i'm so, really sad to say that when i was getting my inks out today i found um a, one of these uh the ones i got a Hob hobby lobby these amsterdam inks one of them was completely completely dried out because the cap had split so it i didn't realize air was getting into it and then one of these um types of inks i don't know if it was the brea reese or the the um artsy ones but it had completely dried out even though the lid was on it was absolutely completely dried out i don't know why but use up some of these craft supplies before they go bad right um and uh knowing that you're saving yourself some money put that money in the in your uh, 
uh, piggy bank and then you know when all these old supplies are used up you can go out and get some new ones right all right guys i hope you like this video i hope you're inspired by it please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel i ask that you do so that this content content can be shared with more people and until the next video i hope you are all truly blessed bye bye